So back in 2015, Microsoft announced the Surface 3, a budget version of its now popular Surface tablet. And while it looked really nice, that Atom processor, two gigs of RAM on some devices, and slow storage, well, it betrayed that design. Fast forward to 2018, and we have the Surface Go, which is technically not a sequel, but spiritually it is. Today, we're gonna to compare and contrast the two, tell you if the upgrade is really worth it. Stay tuned. So here we go, Surface 3 from 2015, Surface Go 2018. Obviously the Surface Go is gonna be a big step down in size, but it actually makes it that much more, well, let's just say adorable. It's a pretty cute device. All right, let's take a look at the ports on the Surface 3, which was a little bit controversial at the time. You do have a three and a half millimeter headset jack, which was closer to the bottom on the right side. It's actually a nice design there, but this is where the problem started, the micro USB port. So instead of having a Surface Connect, you used micro USB to charging. A lot of people lost their chargers and you got slow charging from it. And this is just a terrible Port. Let's just all face some music on that one. Over here, you had a standard USB Type A port, which, you know, that was pretty nice to have. And then you had mini display, and Microsoft was always a big fan of using this, although I rarely ever used it. I don't think many consumers did either. Below the kickstand, you did have a micro SD for expansion, which is pretty nice. And you have this kickstand, which, well, look at that. It did open, so you have that, but it only had three positions, and that was all you could do, and they snapped into place. That was a big change that happened later with Surface Pro. Interestingly, this is the AT&T version, which did have LTE. It came out much later, but you did put the SIM card on the bottom here, which is a little bit awkward, but hey, it worked. Coming to the top, you have the power button and volume rocker, nothing much has changed, and this is still the same antenna bar that we see on Surface Go. Finally, on the back, we did have an eight megapixel camera along with a microphone. Now turning to Surface Go, and my, have things changed. So you still get the kickstand, but now it's completely uh, functional. So it works at all angles, just like Surface Pro. Much better kickstand, feels really nice. And we see the return of Surface Connect, which is a really nice port for charging. And let's face it, you probably won't lose that charger. And instead of USB Type A, we now have a Type C port, 3.1 for display, power, and data. And you still have the headphone jack, which is no longer near the bottom, but it's also not near the top. So, you know, nice little happy compromise there. And below that kickstand, you still have a micro SD slot for expansion. You can put up to 500 gigabytes, although you could probably do a terabyte and it'll be okay too. And then the top area, you can still see the antenna line and you do have the power button and volume rocker on top. And on the back, you still have an eight megapixel camera, but now it's auto focus. So that is a change over Surface 3 and you still have the microphone hole as well. Turn to the front of the devices and Surface Go has a five megapixel front facing camera, which matches Surface Pro. However, on Surface 3, it is just three and a half megapixels. So obviously Surface Go is gonna be the better choice. You also get Windows Hello facial recognition with Surface Go. And on Surface 3, you get nothing. There was just no Windows Hello at the time when the device came out. Turn to the bezels, both are kind of thick, but Surface Go actually has slightly thinner bezels than the Surface 3. Uh, they're both kind of similar. You also notice on Surface 3, we still had a home button at the time, which had the little Windows logo there and you would press it and it would bring you and launch up the start menu. That is no longer a case on Surface at all. So I actually kind of missed that button, but a lot of people accidentally hit it. So kind of understandable. In terms of display on Surface Go, you're talking a 10 inch, 1800 by 1200 resolution. So it's gonna be a little bit smaller than the Surface 3's 10.8 inch which was 1920 by 1280 resolution. However, the pixels per inches are actually in the favor of Surface Go, which is 216 PPI versus 214 of Surface 3. Let's talk about input. So here are the Surface type covers. Obviously Surface Go now is Alcantara. It's really nice, smooth. They also do have one that's non-Alcantara for $99, otherwise it's 130. The big difference is here is gonna be that trackpad. Look at the size of that thing. It is about the same size as the one found currently on Surface Pro. And when you compare it to the one on Surface 3, well, it's a vastly different experience. You also get four finger taps with this trackpad, which again was not a thing when Surface 3 came out. So you're gonna do three finger taps on this trackpad. It's not nearly as good as an experience. In terms of keys, the Surface Goes is using the newer chiclet style, so they're separated more. Meanwhile, Surface 3 had the older style. These are actually both good keyboards. I don't really have any complaints. 
the one four Surface 3 is gonna be larger and a little bit easier to type on, but after a few hours of adjustment, you do get used to typing on Surface Go. The travel is also very good on this keyboard. I really don't have any complaints about it outside of the time it takes to get used to. Let's talk a little bit about pens. My, have times changed in three years? So the original Surface 3 didn't even come with a pen. Not that Surface Go does either, but this was the first device that you had to buy it separately. That pen only supported 256 levels of pressure. It was Intrig. It was just an okay pen experience. Fast forward to Surface Go, and yeah, the new pen works on it, so it's gonna be an extra 99 bucks. Hey, you can choose your color at least. But you're talking 4,096 levels of pressure versus 256. Now you also get tilt support with this new pen and that does work on Surface Go, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. That was a very pro level feature last year and here it is on the budget Surface Go. Now when it came to storing that pen, you would just clip it to the, oh wait, there is, no, nothing happens. This pen does nothing on this device. You have to get a pen loop if you want to attach it to the keyboard. That's right though, with Surface Go, you'd get not only magnets, but wow, these are very strong magnets. In fact, it's so strong, I can pull the whole device with it. So uh, this pen will really stick to it, much better design than the original Surface 3. So far comparing these devices, and it works in the favor of Surface Go. The ports are better, the kickstand is better, you get Windows Hello, the design is better. I mean, everything about it is just, well, better. So when it comes to the processor, Surface 3 ran an Atom Cherry Trail processor. It was notoriously slow, but it also got pretty good battery life and could be in a fanless design. Fast forward to Surface Go, and we now have a Intel Pentium chip, which came out actually last summer in 2017. Still, it's the newest one in its category. And let me tell you, it's a very good processor. For instance, when it comes to Geekbench scores, well, the Pentium processor is gonna basically double single core, and you get a significant improvement on multi-core as well. In fact, it falls just below the Surface Pro 4's Core M3 processor, so you only get very good performance out of this 1.6 gigahertz processor. The other change comes down to RAM, so on the Surface 3 you had two or four gigabyte configuration options. Surface Go, you have four or eight gigabyte, that eight gigabyte obviously being the sweet spot. The other big change between these two devices comes down to graphics processors. So the original Surface 3 had an Intel HD chip and its score was around 8,000 on Geekbench, which was not very good. Looking at the Surface Go though, we're talking Intel HD 615. And man, it literally doubles the graphics performance of the Surface 3. And you notice this, when you play video games like Minecraft, you're getting full 60 frames per second. It's absolutely smooth. It's a really enjoyable experience. That's a huge change from the Surface 3. Perhaps even bigger though than the graphics processing and single core scores, it's gonna be that storage. So you can get up to 256 gigabytes now with the Surface Go, although well, it's coming out a little bit later. The 128 is now available, and the Surface 3 only went up to 128 gigabytes, but it's the type of storage that you're using. So on the 128 model, which we have here, we tested the SSD score, and it blows away what the Surface 3 was capable of doing. We're talking a tenfold increase in read speeds, getting over a thousand megabits per second on Surface Go. It's actually better than Surface Laptop, which is pretty insane. Those write speeds are also gonna be at 500 megabits per second too. I can't even compare how slow it was on the original Surface 3, and this makes all the difference when you combine that with your graphics and that new processor. Well, the Surface Go feels like a real PC. You don't get as much slowness compared to Surface 3. All right, now shout out to the hardcore Surface fans who are wondering, what about Wi-Fi? Microsoft famously has used Marvel Avastar in all their Surface devices, and a lot of you have complained about it. I personally don't have any issue, but I know you do. Well. Good news here, Surface Go is using Qualcomm Atheros. Yes, for the first time, we're seeing a different Wi-Fi chipset on Surface, and I've had no issue with it so far. Fingers crossed it stays that way. All right, finally, there is pricing. So the original Surface 3 started at $499 at the time, plus you had to buy the cover, plus you had to buy the pen. Now that hasn't changed with Surface 3, but the price did drop down to $399. Now that's gonna be the slower 64 gigabyte model, which has a different type of storage. So you probably wanna go for the $550 model, but that was always the case anyway. Surface 3, the one you really wanted was the four gigabyte, which was the upgrade. So not much has changed there, but the price is now lower and you're getting much more. The other change is going to be availability. So starting on August 2nd in the United States and Canada, you can pick up the Surface Go. But by the end of August, it'll be in another 25 countries. And by October, another 10. 
It's an impressive launch for Microsoft, who's been slowly improving their ability to launch devices in more countries at once, so more of you can enjoy this. The only downside I can see with Surface Go is going to be its size. It is a little bit smaller than the original Surface 3, but that's also part of its charm. It's just actually adorable and fun to use. I mean, how do you not want to carry this device around with you? But the real story here is the performance gain, which a lot of you want to know about. The Surface Go absolutely destroys the Surface 3. It's night and day. And I'm not saying this is a Core i7 Surface laptop out there, but it is a very fast device. It's going to allow you to run most of your apps at a pretty good speed with without being frustrated, and that's really important. Sure, I'd still like to see an improvement when it comes to the processor, but overall, it doesn't throttle. We ran it at maximum power for our 20 minutes and didn't see any throttling with this device, and the heat stayed very cool as well. It's just an excellent experience when you combine it with that Windows Hello, the much improved pen support, the improvements that came with Windows 10 in general, the improved kickstand. All around, this is just a much better device. If you're coming from the Surface 3, there's really no reason not to upgrade to the Surface Go. It's just an outstanding experience in comparison. I would never go back to the Surface 3 after this. So there's a quick comparison between the original Surface 3 and the brand new Surface Go. Now, if you like this video, guess what? You can hit that subscribe button below as we'll be covering a lot more of the Surface Go in the coming weeks with lots of tips and tricks. You can also leave me a comment and tell me what you think. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.